Okay, the next talk is uh, probabilistic flow circuits towards unified deep models for tractable probabilistic inference. The authors are Sahil Sidek, Christian Kersting, Sri Ram Natarajan, and the speaker is Sahil Sidek. Um, thank you, Professor Decker, and hi, everyone. Hope you're all having an amazing time at UAI. Uh, my name is Sahil. I'm a PhD student at the University of Texas at Dallas, and I'm really excited to be here to present our work, Probabilistic Flow Circuits. This is unified work with Professor Christian Kersing at U Darmstadt and my advisor, Professor Sriram Natarajan. So building models that can effectively represent as well as efficiently reason about the unknown underlying distribution that generated a given set of data points has been an important and longstanding goal in AI. Now, when we build such models, there are two key characteristics that we typically look for. First, we need them to be expressive enough and have the flexibility to model complex probability distributions in high dimensional spaces. And second, we need them to be capable of reasoning probabilistically about the learned data distribution, or in other words, they should have the ability to perform exact probabilistic inference tractably. Now, indeed, achieving both of these at the same time is challenging because optimizing for one typically comes at the cost of the other. And as a result, we have very expressive models, but which are intractable, such as deep generative models on one hand and more tractable probabilistic models, which are not so expressive on the other hand. So in this work, we aim to bridge this gap by building models which are both expressive as well as tractable by combining design principles from both paradigms. More specifically, we combine normalizing flows with probabilistic circuits. Um, and to give you a brief teaser of what we achieve in the end, we build hybrid models comprising of probabilistic circuits with normalizing flows incorporated at the leaves. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to understand as well as appreciate why and how we arrive at this construction. Now, before I go into the details, let me give you a brief outline of this talk. So I'll begin by brief, briefly introducing the basic background on probabilistic circuits and normalizing flows. And then I'll move on to the existing work on integrating flows with circuits. And then proceeding to our work, we'll begin with the discussion on the existing shortcomings of this approach. And we will look at how we can define, <coughs> sorry, more structural properties that can overcome these limitations, which naturally lead to the definition of probabilistic flow circuits. And we will look at how we can actually design, what design principle do we have to keep in mind when building such models? And we'll look at a couple of experimental results and finally conclude by identifying a few future directions. So with that, let's begin the discussion. So the, the, the term probabilistic circuits, or PCs, was coined recently by Yu Jung Choi and others um, as a unified notion that encompasses several generative models that, that represent probability distributions in the form of computational graphs. Now these computational graphs comprise now, these computational graphs comprise of three types of nodes. Firstly, they have leaf nodes, which represent, represent simple univariate distributions, which are assumed to be tractable. The second type of nodes are sum nodes, which, represent, which, which computes a convex combination of the distributions modeled by their children. They can be viewed as taking mixtures and adds expressivity to the model. The third, the third type of nodes are product nodes, which compute a product of the distributions modeled by their children. They can be viewed as encoding factorizations or independences between their children. And as you will see, uh, the, these factorizations will help uh, enable tractability for several probabilistic, probabilistic inference tasks. Now, what makes PCs? Um, OK, so these three types of nodes can be stacked in the form of a circuit to create a PC. And the output of a PC is the output of its root node, and it can be computed recursively by evaluating the network bottom up. Now, what makes PCs uh, so attractive is that they are tractable models for several probabilistic inference tasks. So let us look at a few examples of what inference tasks we might be interested in in real life. So the first and perhaps most common inference scenario involves um, evaluating the probability mass or density associated with a, a complete assignment of values to the model random variables. This is typically known as evidential inference. In certain cases, we might be interested in computing the likelihood of a subset of variables that, that are modeled, which is called marginal inference. And in certain cases, we might be interested in computing the likelihood of an event, given that another event has happened, which is conditional inference, and it involves performing evidential and marginal inference. 
the third type of inference uh, is map inference or MPE in which we are interested in computing an assignment of values that maximizes um, the probability density. Now, in order to make these uh, inference queries tractable or perform them tractably using a PC, we typically need to enforce certain structural properties over it. Uh, let us look at a few of them. The first one is smoothness, which states that the children of some nodes must have the same scope. So the scope, of a, the scope of a node can be understood as a set of random variables over which it computes a function. So if you think about some nodes as taking mixtures, what this essentially means is that you need the mixtures to be defined over the same set of variables. The distribution should be defined over the same set of variables so that you get a valid distribution as the output. Decomposability is another property which states that the children of product nodes must have disjoint scope. So if you think about, if you want your product nodes to encode factorizations, uh, or independences between its children, then uh, a variable cannot occur in two of its children. Right? That's essentially decomposability. A more restrictive form of property is determinism, which says that the children of some nodes in a PC should have disjoint support. Now, when so you can show that you can perform evidential inference tractably using a PC if it is smooth. You can perform marginal and conditional inference tractably if it is smooth and decomposable. And you can perform map inference if your PC is decomposable and deterministic. Now, there are a lot more complex probabilistic queries that you can perform using PCs under more further structural constraints. So if you're interested, more in, interested in learning more about them, please look at the amazing papers and tutorials by Yujang Choi and Antonio Vergari and others. So the second type of models that we consider are normalizing flows, which are essentially deep generative models, uh, which use invertible and differentiable neural transformations, also known as diffeomorphisms, to map your complex data space into a simple base space such as a Gaussian. And uh, the diffeomorphic property allows computing the density in the data space exactly using the change of variables formula. Now, since diffeomorphisms are closed under compositions, you can stack multiple such invertible transformations to get an, to get an expressive transformation that slowly transforms your complex data distribution into a simple Gaussian distribution. We can perform sampling by sampling in the Gaussian and using the inverse transformation. Now in normalizing flows, these invertible transformations are typically parameterized using neural networks. This gives them a lot of expressivity, much more than PCs. And, in, and normalizing flows are also tractable for evidential inference since they support exact density valuation. However, you cannot use them for more complex inference queries, unlike PCs. So naturally, uh, combining flows with PCs is one way to both increase expressivity as well as retain tractability, and this has been explored before. So integrating flows with circuit was first explored by the work by Pevni et al. And the way they did this was by introducing a new type of node within PCs, which they call transform nodes. And in, uh, so, if, so intuitively, a transform node can be understood as applying the change of variables formula. So if a transform node is defined over a PC node A, then you can think of it as applying the change of variables formula by considering the distribution model by A as the base distribution for your flow and using the invertible transformation associated with the transform node. So in, in this work, the, paper, the authors propose to use invertible affine transformations, which can be placed arbitrarily within a PC. And the resulting network uh, model was called some product transform network. So in our work, we build uh, upon this work. And um, we first begin with an analysis or understanding of, of the shortcomings that exist with this particular construction. So more specifically, we show that placing tr transform nodes arbitrarily within a PC can violate its decomposability property, which makes uh, inference for marginal, conditional, and map queries intractable. Now, to understand why this happens, let's look at how is tractability achieved for a simple PC when it satisfies the properties of smoothness and decomposability. So computing marginals or conditional involves computing integrals of the joint over the unobserved variables. So if you look at a smooth sum node and look at the integral over it, you can you can uh, write it, write down the integral over the output of a smooth sum node as the convex sum of the integrals defined over the children of a sum node. Right? Similarly, when you have a decomposable product node, you can decompose the integral over the product node as products of integrals defined over its children. Now, when this is uh, when you think about this recursively, when you apply this recursively, you can see that. Uh, when you compute the integral over the root node in the PC, this reduces to integrals over the leaf nodes, which we assume to be tractable. So performing or computing um, marginal and conditional inference just involves uh, evaluating the network bottom, bottom up with the leaf nodes set to the corresponding integrals. 
So we asked the question, can you still push down integrals in this manner when you introduce a transform node into a PC? Well, if you look at a transform node, which is defined over a sum node, we can see that the integral over it can be written down as a sum of integrals of the transform node defined over the child nodes of the sum node, right? But when the transform nodes are defined over a product node, this is not the case because the change of variables formula introduces dependencies between the children of a product node. And as a result, you cannot write down the integral as products of the, products of the integrals of the transform nodes defined over the children of a product node, right? Or in simpler terms, the transform nodes causes the scope of the children of product nodes to overlap. And as a result, you cannot push down, push down the integrals as in the case of a decomposable PC, uh, which means that um, marginal and conditional inference becomes intractable. So if you look at it, we could possibly overcome this issue if you were to define additional structural properties over the transform nodes. So that is our second contribution. We define a property called tau decomposability, which specifically considers the decomposability of the transform nodes. And intuitively it can be understood it requires that the transformations should be such that it transforms the variables associated with the children of product nodes independently. So for example, if X1 and X2 denote the variables, uh, the, the scopes of two children of a particular product node, and if Z1, Z2 is the output when you're applying a function F, then if Z1 is computed as a function of both X1 and X2, then the transformation is not tau decomposable. However, if Z1 depends only on X1 and Z2 depends only on X2, then such a transformation is tau decomposable. Now, if you look at the integral that we had earlier, you can see that in the presence of tau decomposability, you can write down the integral as products of integrals uh, of the transform node defined over the children of product nodes. In our work, we formally prove that tau decomposability is in fact a necessary condition for tractability, or more specifically that a sum product transform network is decomposable only, only if all of its transform nodes are tau decomposable. We can also show that it is a sufficient property when all the, all the product nodes in the PC are decomposable. But now what, what implications does tau decomposability have in terms of expressivity? Well, we saw earlier that the integrals over transform nodes could be pushed down. Uh, you can extend this analysis to see that the transform nodes themselves in the presence of tau decomposability can be reduced from the parents of internal nodes to their children. So what this means is that if you consider a PC with arbitrarily placed transform nodes, in the presence of tau decomposability, such a circuit reduces to having a new type of transform node defined just over the leaf distributions. Now these uh, new transform nodes can be understood as, so if you consider a leaf node, the new transform node over it can be understood as compositions of transformations, which are encountered on a path from that leaf node to the root node in the original PC. So in other words, it reduces to having a normalizing flows defined just at the leaf distributions. So we call the resulting class of models as probabilistic flow circuits. These are essentially PCs, but with normalizing flows at the leaves. They have added expressivity because you can model more complex distributions at the leaves. Uh, so for example, if you consider uh, the synthetic 2D circular data distribution shown here, and if you consider a simple PC comprising of four product nodes and a single sum node, you can see that this PC is not able to model the distribution faithfully uh, because it can only learn unimodal Gaussians at the leaves. But if you take a PC with the same structure, but if you were to incorporate a normalizing flow at the leaves, it can better approximate the distribution because it can learn multimodal distributions at the leaves. But since the flow transformations are restricted to the leaves, not all transformations give us the same added expressivity. So for example, if you consider the invertible affine transformations, which was proposed in the uh, SPTN work, we know that compositions of affine transformations are still, is still an affine transformation, and that an affine transform Gaussian leaf is still a, still a Gaussian leaf. So you do not have more flexibility to model anything apart from a Gaussian, right? So obviously you need more expressive transformations, but at the same time, there can be other design principles um, that, that are desirable or other characteristics that are desirable when you are building for flow transformations specifically tailored towards circuits. So for example, if you look at map inference, if you need tractability for map inference, you need the ability to compute the modes of the leaf distributions tractably. Now in a PC, since you had simple unimodal Gaussian, this was straightforward, but in, in the case of flow circuits, you have more complex distributions at the leaves. And to compute the mode of them, it, it's, it's a more challenging task. So with these design principles in mind, 
uh, we propose to use uh, a class of transformations which are based on splines. And spline-based normalizing flows are one of the state of the art models in the flow literature. And if you think about splines, splines can be understood as piecewise functions. They essentially divide the data space into a set of bins and fit a polynomial function within each bin. Uh, we propose to use invertible linear rational spline transformations uh, within each bin, which takes the form f of x equals ax plus b upon cx plus d. And we prove that if you use if you uh, if you use a probabilistic flow circuit with the linear rational spline transformations defined at the leaves, it is tractable for evidential inference if the PC is smooth, for marginal and conditional inference if your PC is smooth and decomposable, and as well as for map inference if your PC is decomposable, deterministic, and if you were to use a student's t distribution as the base distribution for your flow. Now, I would also like to add that there can be other flow transformations which possibly achieve the same properties, but we leave that exploration for future work. We also experimentally validated the added expressivity as well as learning efficiency of integrating normalizing flows at the leaves of PCs uh, by considering several synthetic as well as real-world data distributions. And we, we were able to observe that flow circuits were able to achieve better performance much faster and often it put them in the same ballpark as more in more less tractable models such as normalizing flows now the the tractability for of probabilistic circuits to perform inference scenarios tractable uh, to perform conditional and marginal inference can be used in several downstream applications as well for example the tractability for conditional inference can be used for image in painting where you can generate the 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 pixels, the missing pixels by sampling from the conditional distributions over the occluded pixels, given the non-occluded pixels. You can also perform controlled generations by sampling. You can generate uh, parts of your data distribution with certain characteristics uh, by conditional inference. To summarize, in our work, we, the, 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 we considered the problem of bridging gaps uh, to building bridges to build to to reduce the gaps between the expressivity and tractability, or mo build models which are more expressive and tractable. And we did we did so by considering normalizing flows and probabilistic circuits. We looked at what pathologies exist in the existing formulations. We saw how we can build better models. What more structural properties do you need to overcome these issues, and how they lead to the definition of flow circuits. And we also looked at what design principles should we follow and look for when actually designing these models. There are also a lot of interesting future directions for this work. So one of the limitations currently is that um, introducing normalizing flows uh, over the leaves does include an additional computational overhead in terms of parameters. Um, so one extension could be building more scalable models by having parameter sharing between the flow transformations defined at the leaves. And a more interesting um, future work, which is more closer to my heart and something you're looking at, is using flow circuits for probabilistic multi-model learning, because in many domains, you have multiple moralities of data. For example, if you consider the medical domain, you have electronic health records, but then you also have high dimensional data such as images. Now, how do you build probabilistic generative models which can effectively utilize these different modalities? Well, I believe flow circuits is a way because you can now, now integrate normalizing flows trained over different modalities as leaf distributions in a unified probabilistic circuit. So that's all for the talk. Here are the QR codes for the paper and the code. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, please visit the poster session later today. And thank you so much for your attention. If you have questions, I'll be happy to take. Okay, so we move to the discussion. It's Martin Trepp. Uh, this is online, I guess, right? Oh. Yes. Okay. So go ahead. All right. Um, thank you very much. Um, if you can maybe move to the next slide. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, plastic flow circuits. Uh, I think it's a very nice paper. I was. Uh, very glad to be able to discuss it here. Um, maybe can you move to the next slide? Thank you. Um, I'm first going to summarize a little bit from my point of view. Um, I think we already get a very nice presentation and summary of the work. So the motivation is basically to integrate uh, normalizing flows into the framework of probabilistic circuits to increase their expressivity. 
um, and built upon some earlier work uh, where there was, was basically already attempted uh, and uh, um, first ask the research question, uh, what are basically the conditions uh, required such that inferences remain tractable or marginal inferences remain tractable, <clears throat> which is a question that has not been sufficiently addressed in, in prior work. And uh, as a sort of like a answer to that research question, the authors uh, propose the so-called de um, tau decomposability, uh, which is a property on the transformation nodes, which essentially uh, boils down to having uh, this, as, as it was shown already very nicely uh, with some illustrations that these transformation nodes uh, can be pulled down uh, to the uh, inputs which means that we only have uh, push forward measures at the inputs at the end. And uh, now if, if we have such a model, it raises the question maybe whether we can still gain in representational power. So now we have only these transformations at the leaf nodes and whether we can still do interesting uh, inferences. And so the authors propose to use uh, linear rational splines um, in order to uh, support so like relevant uh, probabilistic inference queries and show that uh, these uh, construction uh, outperforms on, on various data sets, uh, normal probabilistic circuits with, uh, I believe, Gaussian input modes. Next slide, please. Uh, so I have a few, oh, that was one slide too far. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I have a few questions um, about the work. So I, I was wondering whether this introduced uh, complexity in the leaf nodes, which, which uh... oh, thank you. Um, which leads to better performance um, faces any challenges in the parameter optimization. Um, and the second question I would have is whether um, the author has uh, any idea whether these PFCs with the uh, linear rational splines are uh, strictly more expressive efficient than probabilistic circuits with parametric forms as inputs. Uh, so whether we can model any distributions with these models that PCs cannot uh, efficiently represent. And as a last question, I would be curious whether the author envisions uh, a way to kind of attractively integrate transformations that act over more than just one random variable, maybe in some autoregressive meta or some some other construction that uh, yeah that that maybe enables uh, to go away from having only the the push forward measures at the inputs. Thank you. So thanks, Martin, for the amazing questions and the summary. So the first question, uh, does the introduced uh, complexity in the leaf nodes lead to challenges in parameter optimization? So from our experiments, what we observed was that having normalizing flows at the leaves actually helped um, improve the log likelihood much more faster. So the, the parameter optimization actually became more simpler. And I think this, uh, I don't know how to explain, but it also resonates with recent, recent um, observations in the literature, which says that when you increase the capability of a PC by in increasing its sum nodes or you know, vectorizing it, it introduces additional latent information in the PC and, it's, and the optimization becomes much more harder. Uh, but in the case of flows, I think um, what we observed was that when you, when you introduce flows at the leaf nodes, the optimization was actually more easier uh, because the model converges much more faster uh, than the base PC itself. The second question, are PCs more strict, strictly more expressive efficient than, uh, sorry, P, probabilistic flow circuits more expressive efficient than PCs? Well, we do not have any theoretical results which, uh, which establishes or proves this, but this is definitely an interesting direction to look at. But what I would like to add is that if you consider a PC and a probabilistic flow circuit with the same, uh, same structure for your, with the same computational graphs, then having leaves, having normalizing flows at the leaves definitely gives you more added expressivity as we saw in the figure, right? So if you have, so in the figure that we saw earlier, there's no way you can exactly model that 2D distribution as a, as, um, as a foursome of simple factorized distributions, right? But in a probabilistic flow circuit, you can do that. But can you theoretically establish that? That is a very interesting question. I'll be, inter I'll be definitely interested in looking at that. And the third one is more generic. Can you envision a tractable integration of transformations that act over multiple random variables? Well, the, the, so the key takeaway, I think, from the discussions on tau decomposability is that 
you you need you need you are interested in improving the expressivity, but unlike normalizing flows where you transform the entire space, you cannot do that. Um, you cannot still do that in flow circuits, and if if you want tractability to be maintained, right? So you you are still restricted to flows over the leaf distributions. Now there might be cases in which you are only interested in tractability for a subset of random variables. Uh, in that cases, you can have flows defined over multiple random variables. Uh, but I would still argue that uh, if, if you want tractability and model flows over multiple random variables, that would be more challenging. There's no free lunch. But it would definitely be interesting to have a more closer look at this. Thank you. Thanks. OK, any questions? One question over there. Uh, do you have a mic? OK. OK. Yeah. So the question, the question is, did we experiment with other types of yeah. uh, rational splines? Because in the flow literature, um, there are like different types of splines used: linear rational splines, quadratic rational, rational splines, cubic splines, etc. So we did experiment. We did experiment with linear as well as quadratic rational splines, but there was there was no for, uh, added, you know, expressive power with quadratic than you get from linear splines. That what what was what we what we observed. So you get the same performance with both. So we stick to the lesser expensive one. So yeah, thanks. Let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>